All right. This morning, I have like a very important or a special word for us. Uh, so listen up very, very carefully. I hope I can finish it. Um, and it's entitled, what? What's it entitled? Binding the strong man. Yeah. Okay. And then a subtitle, who's in the house? Who is in the house? And we're talking about house that is you, hmm? your temple. And the strong man, of course, we're talking about is the devil himself. Now, there's a very rare glimpse of the activities of Satan in the people, in people generally speaking. And, and of course, Jesus tells the story. Um, I'm not sure if you actually paid attention to this text. Um, it's found in Luke 11, verse number 21. Let's read that. When a strong man, fully armed, Jesus saying this, telling the story, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace or safe. But when a stronger than he comes up upon him and overpowers him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. And then the Lord adds, he, he who is not with me is against me and he who does not gather with me scatters have you ever had people against you hmm? they're really not with you hmm. and if anybody you find breaking not building they're not gathering with you it's a wonderful way an easier way to understand some of this thing but he is talking about the enemy here mainly. And then uh, let's look at the other three verses, part of our text this morning. It's found in Luke 11, 24, 24. Same text, same, same context. When an evil spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And the context of this passage, we'll, we'll be unwrapping this package this morning, this whole passage. The context of this passage deals with the Pharisees accusing Jesus of casting out devils by Beelzebub. Beelzebub was the prince of the devil. He says, you are not casting out devils by the spirit of God, but by Beelzebub. I had somebody accuse me like that one time, uh, quite a few years ago. And um, so I was hauled in and then this guy says, you know, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not very excited about it. We are casting a lot of devils then, seriously. And lots of people are getting free and they were getting healed and all the wonderful things were happening. And then we have one individual, not very happy. But because he found a problem theologically with the fact that Christians can be demonized. Now, I didn't believe that Christians can be demonized until the Lord threw me in the deep end. 81, somewhere the 81, 82. The Lord just threw me the deep end by one of my Sunday school teachers manifesting demons in the church. So I thought, no, 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 it can't be. She's a Christian. How can Jesus and the spirit, evil spirit, live in the same place? And so anyway, fast forward to probably 85, 86, somewhere there. So this guy hauled me in and said, look, um, I'm not really excited about all of this, you know, business that's going on. I said, why? He said, I'd like to know this. Uh, whenever we pray for somebody, nothing happens. Hmm? But when you pray for that person, everything is going on with them. 
I said, I don't know, maybe the doctor is different. <laughs> I, I didn't say that to him. I said, I said, I don't know. I think, you know, I'm probably more a, a alert, you know, more, maybe, maybe I have more faith. I don't know. I, I just said, But then, then he says, no, 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 no. I know what it is. You are putting it on them. <laughs> and then immediately the Lord gave me this text. Not this one here. But go back to about 20, I think it is. Um, let me see if I get it right. Luke 11, 20. Let me see what you got. Go back one more. Oh, no, go more. Sorry. I was not ready to even talk about this. More? <laughs> no, man, go back. Go back. Okay, go, go, go forward now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I want to go somewhere where I think I'm going to get the answer I want. It's not your fault, it's me. Okay, in, in Matthew 12, it says this. And this is what the Lord gave me then. And he's talking in the same context. If, if you're accusing me of putting spells on people or like, Jesus was accused of uh, casting out devils by Beelzebub. In Matthew 12, it says, in verse number 30 or 20, was that I, I just saw it. Yeah, 20, 31. Wherefore, I say to you, Matthew 12, 31, all manner of sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. What was happening is that they said of Jesus that he was casting out devils, not by the spirit, but by Beelzebub. And, and that accusation, what they were saying, that the spirit is, this, you know, was degrading the spirit, was blaspheming the work of the spirit. That was like deadly. And in fact, it was so deadly that the Lord said, in the same context, that if any sin, blasphemy will be forgiven men. But when you blaspheme against the spirit, it, you're walking a very tight rope. You know? And it will not be forgiven. Jesus said, no matter what happens, you will not be forgiven of your sin when you sin against the Holy Spirit. So you can't take the work of the devil and relegate it to, to the Spirit. Or take the work of the Spirit and relegate it to the devil. Say, so he's the one that's doing it. That is the context here. And in Jesus going back to Luke 11, he's He's really addressing this accusation. And I'm not really want to deal with the accusation. I just wanted to tell you how things are in people's lives. And as a pastor, there are some things that I had to deal with very, very seriously in my life. Because I didn't believe that Christians could be demonized until my Sunday school teacher was manifesting in the church. And then from then on, from then on, I didn't look for the devils, but I just made sure that, that people were free from the devils. And wherever I went in the world, doesn't necessarily mean just here in Chatsworth, but wherever I went in the world, I would cast out devils wherever they are, and if I came across them. Whether it be white people, black people, colored people, it doesn't matter who. But when there was a devil, I would not say that's the spirit of God, or whatever, I would deal with that thing and break it. So the enemy is not very thrilled about that. What he'd like to do, he'd like to do this work that I'm talking to you about today. He'd like to talk, and I don't talk about this all the time, do I? 
I don't know if I've ever shared this with you in the last 40 years, I don't think. But, so I don't like dealing with some of this stuff, not because I, you know, I'm afraid. No, I'm not afraid about anything. But I think it's important for us to, to understand context of what ministry is all about. Ministry is not just wonderful, you know, you, you're just, well, you've got a nice building, you've got some people, you, you know, live your life. No, ministry is hard, it's tough, it's the front line, you're dealing with devils, and you have to cast the devils out, you're going to heal the sick, you've got to deal with other people's issues in their lives and, and so on. And you haven't got time to play games, you know? You don't have time for games. You want to deal with this. I'm sure you don't have time for, for games either. So you need to deal with it. And so, at the Bible, when you look at it, the whole Bible, it emphatically declares that Jesus, this Lord that we have given ourselves to, is in direct opposition and is an open opposition to Satan and his work. He just didn't come down softly. He came down hard. And it was so hard that the Lord sent him to go and destroy the work of the enemy. And he cost him his life. And that, that, that um, victory has been given to us as the church to go and exercise, to action. We can't say, no, no devil here. People, people are bound, people are hurting. People, how the Spirit of God living the same person? We have to figure this out, right? I, I don't want to want to theologically figure it out. What I want to know is, who am I dealing with in the life of this person in front of me? I don't want any, we, the Bible calls them unclean spirits. That's what Jesus this mentioned. The unclean spirits alluding to pigs. Pigs, if you put even a, clean them up and put a bow tie on them, where will they go? You tell me. The pig, that's what they are. We always say, when somebody is very dead, you say, you're a pig. That's why we eat pork, we cut them. <laughs> nah, that was not very good, but anyway. So, right in the very beginning, Genesis 3, it says, God says, I will cause hostility, enmity, between you and the woman. Talking about Mary. Between her offspring, talking about Jesus, and your offspring. Your seed, talking to the devil, your seed, you, and your people, and her seed, talking about Jesus. Remember capital S. He shall bruise your head. When somebody's head is trampled, he's dead. He is going to put you away. But you will bruise his heel. You don't die from a, heel, a bruised heel. But that has been declared in chapter 3, right in the very beginning of Genesis, right in the beginning of the Bible. So, Jesus does not have or ever has tolerated or has tolerance for darkness. He is the light, and when he comes, darkness has to flee, right? So, the accusation that he has a truce with the devil is a lie. So, my friend, I told him, leaned across the desk, and I said to him, my friend, if I told you his name, you'd say, oh, okay. I don't want to tell you the name. So he said, my friend, I said, you are in dire straits. You're in trouble. Please, don't go that route. I'm not even looking for the devil and looking for fights. I just want to pray with people, bless them, heal them. You know, I've had people, I remember one guy, I was praying with him. It was in a conference at in, in Johannesburg, I think, and there was this big conference, this was a Wimber conference, but there, there was this guy on the floor, white guy, and I went to him to pray with him, to see what was going on. I wanted to pray with him. Others were praying with him, and then I immediately, when I went there, I could tell, he was like, this devil is this wanting to come out of this man. 
So I got on my knees right down there and lots of people, a lot of thousands of other people. So I just prayed, I said, Lord, come. And then this thing started to manifest. And there's not a major manifestation, just lying there, shaking. And I said, come out and all of that. And, uh, and this um, thing, after a while, just shook violently, shook it violently. And then, then went out. And then I said, okay, let's wait, let's wait. Let's see what the Lord does. And um, it was just lying there. And then it started again. Again. I said, okay, wait, you go now. Another one. And it went on like that for I don't know how long, but um, probably 10 minutes. And the guy at the end of it, I couldn't, there's no more manifestations. It's done. He was done. I looked at him and said, hey, Sam, thank you for waiting and uh, being patient. It's been a long time I've been hassling with this thing, and I'm glad you could free me from this now. How's that? How much can you pay for that? If I met him today, I would not know him. I don't know who that guy is. But there he was on the floor. Shouldn't I free him? He's a child of God. I don't even ask questions how you came here, what you're doing, where you're going. Have you had tea this morning? So the accusation that Jesus had a truce with the devil is a lie. And so Christ struck a very decisive, fatal blow at Satan. And he, and he cannot ask for the devil's help to fight him. Right? That accusation don't stick. And the one verse, first, first John chapter three, verse eight says, "He who sins against the devil, the devil is the being number." For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. He didn't come to pussyfoot around, you know, all of this thing. He wanted to deal with this stuff. And you would get bold in the Lord and bold in the spirit if you start walking with God. Hello? You will not be bold if you're not walking with God. So, here is now the main meal. You ready for it? I'm going to try not to be long. I've got about 20 minutes at least. If I don't finish, I don't finish, but at least you get a gist of it. There are three parts to this passage. Three parts. One talks about a man outside of Christ. The other one talks about a man that is in neutral. You know, you put neutral, no gear. Not going forward, not going backward. Nobody's home. There's no, there's a form of godliness. That's it. But deny God's power. The man is a very, in a very neutral place. And I'll explain all that to you now, who that person is and what's happening. And then then, thirdly, there's the man in Christ. Three parts to this particular text. And let's read it slowly. This is our introduction to this. So let's go into it. In verse number 21 of Luke 11, the man outside of Christ, this thing talks about that, talks to that. When a strong man, talking about the devil, who's fully armed, guards his own palace, talking about this house, this person, his goods are in peace, are safe. He's thinking about that. And then the man that is neutral, the scripture says in verse 24, uh, when a, an unclean spirit goes out of a man, how does the unclean spirit go out? And it wasn't cast out, he just you know, took a walk. He's going, you know, they had a free, free way in that person's life. He would come and go, come and go. This is the person in neutral, he's not for God, is not without God actually, you know, he's, he's got some kind of a religious thing going on, but he's not, he's not really saved, not really transformed. So when an unclean spirit goes out of man, he goes, who's speaking now? This is Jesus. Who you want to listen to, Jesus, or you listen to anybody else? So when, he, when he's talking about it, he gives you like a glimpse into the heavenlies, what's happening with people. 
When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and, um, and put in order. And then, and then he goes and takes with him ooh, seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter the man and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. I have seen this so many times. You can never believe what goes on. So let's not play games. We're not playing games. We're here to, to, to straighten things out, right? In this world, that is. I'm not interested in straightening people out. I can't handle that. I, what I'd like to do is if there is something that needs to be done, when you go to hospital, you note, if you notice the doctor don't talk too much, right? There's no like small talk. So was, you know, he, you know, he gets it, what's the problem? What's going on? And deal with the problem. That's what they do, that's what they do right? Now, I'm like that too. I feel like, hey, no, I don't got time to, you know, I want to deal with this thing. What is God doing with you? Let's see. Let's move you on. Because I know there is like trouble in the spirit here in our lives. And we need to deal with this darkness. That's what we came to do. Somebody died for this. So this is serious. Now I joke around a lot and we have fun, but I don't joke about these things. I'm very serious about lots of things, but and this is one of them. And so then uh, obviously the man in Christ in verse number 22, uh, but when he's stronger than he, let's talk about somebody, the stronger man, Jesus, then he comes upon him, he overpowers him, and he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. That's our place, those of us that are in Christ. But you must not take for granted that you're in Christ or not, you need to figure that out. You have to figure that out. Otherwise, you don't mean a thing and you will do nothing to the devil. You won't even dent his armor. Do you understand? The Lord bless you, man. I'm not done. I only started getting warmed up. So, so Jesus is giving us a description of our life as it is. So let's deal with the first part, the man outside of Christ. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his goods are in peace. And keep in mind that Jesus here is describing a man in his natural state. He hasn't come to the, come to the Lord. It's in, it's in, it, he's in his sinful state. And the scripture declares that, that this is the spirit now that is now, that's now working in the children of disobedience. If you want some proof, here it is. In Ephesians 2, verse 2 says... Talking about, us, talking about us before, in which the time passed, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Go back to verse 1 because it sounds bad the reading from here. Verse nothing, you know. And you, he made alive, made resurrected, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now you can read verse 2. In which you once walked according to the course of this world. All of us, that's all of us that are in Christ today. And you walk according to the prince of the power of the air. Notice how all of this is worded. Prince of the power of the air. And so the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Disobedience, people that have not come to the Lord. People in their natural state. Now, you, all of us today can figure out which category of persons we are now. Where we belong, where we really, at which spot are we? We mustn't take for granted that you're not saved. You mustn't take for granted that you are saved. You've got to figure this out. You must know. So when you do, you can tell. You can tell that enemy to get off because you know. You know who you are. You got it. Getting frightened. Don't get frightened. It's all right. So, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, verse 3, and among whom also we all once at, 
at one time, conducted ourselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. But God was forces. But God, he saved us. All right, so in our context here, in our text, that is, even though, although man's heart was intended to be the throne of God, his heart, the house of God, is going to be the throne of God, it has now become the palace of Satan. Who are we talk about now? The man outside of Christ. The man outside of Christ, his heart, his heart supposed to have been thrown. I said, oh man, God is living with me. I, I, you must think about it. Don't take for granted. Think about that. Is he really there? Because the enemy would like you to just, you know, wave at it and think you're all right. Because that's what he'd like. But when that thing has become the palace of Satan, then you're going to have to figure out what I had to deal with this when I was 19, by the way. And so here in this verse that we read, the evil spirit is called a strong man. Yeah, strong man. And he's surely that. Who can stand against him? You and I can't stand him. He's a strong man with a vengeance. He's not come to, uh, you know, love you and, you know, say nice things about you. He's here to steal, kill, and destroy you. That's his job. And so, but what we must do now as people that are in Christ, we must be thankful that there is a stronger man than he. Thank you for Jesus. Eh? There's a stronger man than he. And Satan would easily crush us, I tell you, if it were not for Christ who comes to our rescue. We are nothing. Doesn't matter how loud you can pray, what you can do if you're not in Christ. If the greater one is not living in you, you are no patch. No match. So we are told that he is, that he is a strong man. We are also told in the same text, in verse 21, that, keep it at verse 21, Luke 11, and then, then we are told that Satan is fully armed, is fully armed, it's fully armed. And what it means is that he is never without weapons. He's always got weapons. And, and his principal weapon, listen to this carefully, his principal weapon is lies. Is the lie. What is God's principal weapon? And it says the, the sword of God's spirit is what? The word, which is the truth. Truth. It's the opposite, right? His lies, God's word is true. The, sport, the sword of the evil spirit is the lie. And he's been lying from the beginning. Jesus even said it. He's the father of lies. And sometimes children of the father lie. They lie just like the father. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> so it was, it was by falsehood, by lies, he overthrew the human race. You remember he went to Eve and said, did God say? He just distorted God's word. You know, the enemy is very good when it comes to even distorting God's word. He'll take what is true and twist it a little bit and make you to miss disbelieve, unbelieve, or walk away from it. That's what he will want. He'll take you away from the road to power, where you can power over him. He want to walk away from that. Just get some religion, keep that thing safe. I want my palace to be safe. So he, he overthrew the human race at first by falsehood, and he brought all kinds of brokenness into man, and he continues still to rob and pillage the souls of men, even today, by his falsehood. He tells lies. He, he will tell the sinner sometimes that he's too young uh, to think of death and eternal life. He's, you know, insurance. You don't want to buy. As a young person, you don't want to buy insurance and so on. You think, you know, where I'm going to I'm not dying. I'm going to die. Buy the insurance. Hello? That was free. I just put through that in. You need to think about 
eternal issues. You have to. Because one could die anytime, right? So it's not just about assurance for life after death, but for assurance now. How are you going to live now? Are you going to live a, a pig's life now, or are you going to live a life of a saint of God? What are you going to do? You're going to choose. I don't want this hearts in me. I want all these devils to go. Don't you? I don't want them. So I got no devil. How do you know? Hmm. Keep saying that to yourself. I can, I know that's fine. You need to make sure that the Lord is the one and only on the throne of your heart. So he can make matters worse. He can make something look bad. He can tell the young person, don't worry about eternal things. He can tell the old person, you know what? Uh, you're, you're, it's too late now. Don't worry. You, you, you won't, you know, you're finished. What do you worry about? Eternal things. Yeah, 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 you're dead. There's no grace left. God's not going to take you now. Lies. It constantly tells us lies. So he feeds us with these lies, and then guess what? We too feed him. We actually help each other. He feeds us with his lies, and we buy it, and in turn, we feed him with our fears, our hatreds, our lust, that, because that's his food now. He likes the thing. Fears, hatred, lust, idolatries. We used to live like that, Ephesians said. I just read that to you. Unhappiness, despair, depression, all of these wonderful, weird, and wonderful things that the enemy's food we give to him. Greed, anger, hurt, self-pity, guilt, rejection, all that we give him and he, and he is full. When you start living for God, you'll starve the devil. When the devil is starved in your life, he won't want to stay because he can't stay. You want to look for food. And you can't chase him without some strength and power. Without Christ, you and I are useless. Yeah, he can make men carry coals of fire in their bosom and, and dream that they will not be burnt. You know, I talk about, he's talking about adultery, that, that, that text comes out. He says, can a man take coals of fire in his bosom, in his lap, and not be burnt? The devil says, no, you can walk. You're a fire walker. It's all right. But I tell you, you can get burnt badly. Don't listen to the lies. Hmm. So, because what he has is weapons, right? Fully armed. That's what we're talking about. He's fully armed. And he has a well feathered arrows that he got. Well feathered, nice feathers and the arrows, arrows of pleasure. He sins. The strong man is armed with the lusts of the flesh, all kinds of wonderful categories of lusts he would send to you. Whether it's a people, person, it's another person that you think, or it might be computers where you have all of these wonderful pictures and movies. He's well armed at every point, and he knows how to arm his slave. He, he calls us his slave. Why? Because he keeps us bound. I don't want that in my life. Do you? He, he arms each one of us and the sinner, he arms them to the hilt. It says, that's why sinners behave like sinners. And when the church behaves like sinners and a constant sinning in a certain way, you will find that freedom won't come easy. I know when I was praying with people like that, those devils won't want to leave. Guess what they tell me? Those devils. You know what they tell me? He's mine. She's mine. He don't want to leave me. He doesn't want me to leave. He doesn't want me to leave him or her. So usually the girls have the male spirits and the men have the woman spirits. I'm opening up too much for you. I don't want to shock you. 
but a lot of these so-called gods are named, named after women and men and all that. Very true. Very real. So wake up and smell the coffee. Hmm. He will shoot. Watch it. And he will cover the sinner with his armor against God. He says, you must fight against God. In your life, don't take him. So when you see yourself still resisting God, his spirit, his will, his kingdom, you can bet that the enemy is arming you, fortifying you against God and godliness and put such weapons in your hand that, that, that any puny might of the gospel and, and the human conscience can never prevail. So the enemy is just strengthening us, giving us armor. He is fully armed and he guards his palace. That's what we find here. So he tells us he wears an armor. The evil spirits are equipped and kitted out to fight every righteousness. You'll find that all in the Bible. You'll find that even the angels come with swords. You'll be seen. Swords. They fight, man. So the spirits. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen some, some statues of some so-called gods. They got weapons. You know, we used to fight for the weapons. One even got on broom. They're cleaning nothing, they're going nothing, they're doing nothing. So, I, I, yeah, right. So, prejudice, ignorance, evil education, all of these are the chain armor with which Satan girds himself. Prejudice in our country, prejudice. You can see devils are ruling here. Evil spirits that wear a breastplate, an impenetrable breastplate, which is with a seared conscience. They, they don't care. I'm going to cast out devil. Some of them would, would look at me and laugh. <laughs> you can't touch me. You can't touch me. And then when you, the more we pray, that smile turns to cries. I wish you would get involved in the lives of people like that. Then you won't play games. You won't. They are filthy, these devils, filthy. And we all know people through many years they've harbored the spirit and have resisted the gospel. They don't want to believe the gospel or walk with the Lord. They resist God. It's easier to draw blood, somebody said, from iron than to reach some men's hearts. So tough. They have been fortified by darkness. How is the word of God going to penetrate individuals like that but by the Holy Spirit? Yeah. So, let's move on. He, he is very watchful. Look at it, the same text. He guards his palace, he says. He's like a vigilant warden in a prison who keeps walking up and down the prison, in the passage up and down, and he does not let even sleep overtake him. He does not put on, uh, he, he, he does not put on the armor to sleep in it. You know, he doesn't sleep in the armor. He's wide awake. We, we will never find anywhere in the world sleeping devils. Never. They don't sleep. Only the church will find. <laughs> no, I think. No. Wardens. Up and down, guarding. These fallen angels, they rest not, scripture says, day or night, but are like ravenous lions who go about seeking their prey. Your soul, there's a battle for your soul. There's a battle for your life. You might be a Christian in a Christian home, a child in a Christian home, listening to this word, and this is nothing to you. It does not penetrate your heart. You've been hardened by this devil. Watch the enemy. Watch your life. And if you see yourself being hardened 
against God, God's word. You don't care about God's word. You sit here and you're laughing, you're joking, you're talking. You can't even worry about these things. You must watch your heart because the devil knows. He likes that actually. Carry on. It's very good for you to resist the gospel. I will come. What he would do? You will find that the spirit, the spirit, evil spirit would leave and then he'll come back. When he comes back, he'll bring seven others worse than himself and the condition of that person is seven times worse. I can't go there this morning. It's too much to deal with. I'm going to land somewhere around here in a few minutes. But I'll come back to this next week, I think. So when Satan enters a man, a man's heart, he takes care to watch whenever there is the slightest chance of the truth coming in. So when there's a spirit operating, other spirit, he'll watch if there's a, if there's a chance. Like, for example, you're listening to this stuff, he's going to disturb you. He's going to try and disturb you only for two hours or half an hour or 45 minutes to listen to God's word, right? He will try his very best to stop you from getting the truth. He will stop you. And so, you know, I prepare to come to church. Me, I prepare. I try to sleep as best I can. But this morning was, was a little bit hard. I woke up at 3 o'clock. But still, whatever, you have to keep awake. Hmm? You can't come here and sleep. Because men's hearts are in, are in, and there's a battle for their souls. So when you find that the, he finds the devil, that there is the slightest chance of the truth coming in, man, he will, he will fight. He'll put a double guard on the prison, double guard. And when he is, especially when he's under the sound of the word of God, right now, that's what's going on here. I've had people tell me, people that I've prayed with over the years, one would tell me, he says, Pastor, I never heard anything. See that cell phone? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. You can't find that stop button because that is not dying, that thing. You forget to put it off. Yeah, but that's all right. God bless you, help you. I know you're feeling embarrassed. May you be embarrassed. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I was making a point, was it? Eh? What? <laughs> yeah, whatever it was. It was good. It was good. Yeah, yeah, like like that, yeah. But there was there was a there was a I was on the track somewhere. But anyway, that's that's fine. We made the point. So he he will he will he will not take us to places where the word, okay, I was telling you a story about this lady who was telling me one day, I remember one lady who was telling me, you know, Pastor, I don't know what it is, but I don't hear anything. When I come here, church, I hear nothing. I don't, in fact, I don't even see you. How's that? She's wide awake. She's trying her best. She's like, I and then uh, the, there are others who tell me, and I will go home, I try to read the Bible. Some of them are a little bit quacks, but I say, so when do you read the Bible? Oh, na late night, 11 o'clock, you take the Bible, put it like this. Yeah, you will sleep in any position. If you've got a Bible late night, after watching TV for a few hours, you go like this, then you will sleep, obviously. You will try, you know, when you're more awake to read. Why? Because the enemy will rob you of the truth. That's what he'll try to do. So you stay away from the book. That's the truth. You stay away from the book. Then the enemy is not weakened. He's strengthened. See? But when you're strengthened in the word, he can't handle it. He's going to lose his place. He don't like that. I'm making you sharp now. So, so when the gospel, and the true gospel is being preached, and preached with divine power, hosts of devils are sure to gather. They are there watching me and carrying on right now. Far away. They will come. They will cause trouble. They will try their very best. Put you away. They will try. They will try to disturb you. They will disturb your faith. They will disturb you with stories. They will disturb you with people. 
and when Satan says there's a danger to my dominions now, I will put up more resistance to protect my citadel against the attack of God's truth. Yeah, there's a full-on war, people. Full-on war. We must beware. I'm telling you, church, we must be, we must be aware. Where the spirit is working, the enemy is doubly active. Yeah, we must we have to drop a warning here to the lost. And I've said many times, though, we may employ every method to preach and exhort. Satan is always as prompt as we are, having unclean birds. He will be ever ready to carry away the seeds. Remember, Jesus told the story. The seed of the kingdom is being preached, but the birds of the air come and take away the seed that is sown where? In the heart. Right as I'm speaking, it's coming to your heart, your heart is hardened, the birds, devils, take the seed away. Why? Because the truth must not germinate, must not grow in you. That's the goal. Now you might say, well, I don't believe in all that. God bless you, man. Maybe we'll meet in about 10, 15 years. God bless you. And maybe by that time, your life will be all paralyzed, you know, in different ways. And you can't handle the truth. You, you won't be able to handle the truth. You are now seven times worse so the text here says why he guards his palace so there's his goods. He guards his goods, he inhabits his property, his house, he guards his stuff. And then he also claims a sovereignty here. He, you know, he, he, he calls it his palace. What that makes him? A king. It's my palace, I'm the king here in this house. Who's in the house? Palace is usually the board of a king. So Satan considered himself a great king. That's what he wanted to do all the time. So people, I, I want to stop there. Unfortunately, I, I don't want to go more. It's just too much. We'll just continue this at another time. Stand up with me. It doesn't mean that, that I'm done and you, you're done. What you need to do, I think, go back and read this text. Go through it. You probably never read this before. Or if you read it, you just thought, well, it's another parable. Good. Think through it very carefully. What Jesus said, he that is with me does not, is not against me. Hmm? He that gathers with me is not, does not scatter. So gather with the Lord. Gather with these people. Come when you're supposed to come. I will try. I don't know how many devils was in me when I first came to the Lord. I don't know. But I tell you, I put such pressure on myself in trying to run behind the Lord. Read the book. Study. Pray. And I said to the Lord, I don't like this. I don't like this. Please help me with this thing. Take away that thing. And before I even went to church, by the way, before I went to church, I don't know, I think many devils left. This is what Jesus says, the scripture says, that if you resist the devil, he will what? He will flee from you. You don't even have to say, I resist you. People, by the time you say, I resist you, it's too late. You, you already, you know, you took him early in your life. What you do now, you resist him by submitting to the Lord. When you submit to the Lord, the stronger man in your life, the devil can't handle that. Don't act like Briston. You're like, you know, you're uh, um, I can make it a mighty. You and I are nothing. Arnold Schwarzenegger can't make it. <laughs> he, we, 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 yeah, yeah, we, we, any muscled man can't do this. Really. No match. Amen. May the Lord help you. Father, I, I thank you for each one of our people. May they all grow in grace, Lord, in the knowledge of Jesus. And walk with you. May they not be turned away from their way. May they learn what it is from your spirit. As you teach us from your word, may your spirit teach us, guide us into all truth. Lord, I pray that, that we will be able to discern the lies of the enemy, the lies that the enemy speaks. 
I pray, Father, today that you'll bring truth, bring truth. And I pray for each one. If, you, if you're open to the Lord this, this, this morning, and those of you that are far away from the Lord, feel you've never made a commitment to the Lord, I, I want you to do it where you are right now. This is where you are, quietly, under your breath, if you like. And you can say to Jesus, you know, Lord, that I'm hearing today some things that is tearing me up. Would you come into my heart? Would you, Lord, come into my heart? I want you to be the stronger man. Can you pray that with me, all of you? You'll say, Father, I, I thank you for your word. Pray, pray after me. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for coming into my heart. You are the stronger man. Just bind this devil. Bind the strong man. As, as, as he tries to dictate, shut him up. You can pray like that. Come on. Shut him up. And I ask you, Lord, to free me. Free me from all the darkness. Lord, Lord while you're at it in my life, free, free, Lord, my family from that. Free my, my wife and my husband. Free, Lord, my children. In Jesus' name, I pray, free them from the, from the work of the enemy. I thank you for the victory that you've given me in Christ. Pray your blessings upon each one. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. And all of a sudden, amen. God bless you, man.